piping today we are going to see a very very important episode and this episode is dedicated to stress analysis so before we begin this episode i would like to urge you to subscribe our channel and like our videos and share it with your friends it is very important for us that uh, you subscribe to our channel and support us so this video is dedicated for stress analysis basically we are going to see uh, a stress analysis from a broader perspective in the sense that it can be a flexibility analysis in case of piping stress analysis and even uh, a finite element analysis basically stress analysis is a process to determine the magnitude of stress which is induced because of the applied loads so this episode we are going to dedicate completely for stress analysis we are going to see the basics of stress analysis basically whenever there is a body or an object which is subjected to loads because of the applied loads the cross section of that body produces a reaction force that reaction force resists the deformation of that body so here we can see the flexibility analysis stress analysis what we we are uh, discussing about so this is a piping so in piping we can see that uh, the two points the start point and end point start point is that point of the pipe from where the flow enters the pipe and the end point normally we consider as the point termination points from where the flow leaves the pipe so here we can see uh, this is a pipe and of course there are supports at particular intervals where the pipe is supported so the piping should be so much flexible as to keep the stresses in the pipe under a permissible limit so that the pipe doesn't fails so we are going to see that uh, as a definition when pipe system is under operation it experiences various kind of stresses and affect the functioning of pipe system which cannot be removed that means whenever if there is a idle pipe which is not in operation idle pipe of a say plant that plant is uh, shut down or not in operation then also because of the weight of that pipe always there will be a stress on the pipe so hence to control the amount of stresses under permissible value stress analysis method is used so we have to use the stress analysis method to control these stresses we cannot make them exact uh, we cannot uh, keep these stresses as a zero so there will always be some stress because of this applied loads and turning moments but we can control these stresses and keep them under the permissible values so that the system is safe so basically there are two types of stresses the primary stresses and the secondary stresses primary stresses are the stresses uh, which are we can say that not a part of operation like for example the weight of the pipe and weight of the entire piping so that even if the plant is under operation or it is shut down the weight of the pipe will remain constant so that uh, stress which is developed which is produced because of this weight is the primary stress so these are the primary stress and the secondary stresses are those stresses which are produced because of the loads during the operation so considering the primary stresses the weight of the pipe that is one second 
stress due to the snow loads like in case of cold countries where uh, a heap of snow is deposited on the pipeline so there is an extra additional weight of that snow uh, which is to be taken into consideration while designing the pipe and the third is the settlement data so here we can see that this is the pipe which is mounted on these foundation blocks you can see here so these foundation blocks over a due course of time because of the weight of the pipe sinks inside the soil with certain degree with certain amount and this is called as the settlement so sup suppose this is the elevation of support say x and this is x and this is x and this is x suppose this is x this is y this is z and this is so on so x is equal to y because of certain reason because of certain reason at some point of uh, some point if uh, there is this point because of the soil property that oil if it sinks down by say 100 mm in a course of one year and this sinks by say 50 mm in course of uh, one year then there is a variation in the elevation and because of that there will be undue stresses on the pipe so this line is connected to some nozzle that nozzle uh, the rate at which the nozzle comes down because of the settlement and the other support is different then there then also there will be stresses so this is called as settlement so coming to the next these are the secondary stresses what we can see here stresses due to thermal expansion so these two this is a loop and we can see here there are the expansion bellows that are installed these are the supports and because of the thermal expansion we can see here the red color this loop has changed the position okay the stresses due to occasional load this has also to be considered and those are the wind uh, piping which is uh, located 10 meters from the ground uh, for that we have to consider the wind load okay load due to wind velocity not wind load load due to wind velocity uh, that is a occasional uh, load and the stress produced out of that is also occasional stress or occasional stress then the seismic if there is a earthquake then the piping will be subjected to the vibration and chatters because of the uh, tectonic movements and uh, whatever stresses that are developed that are the seismic stresses then the hydro test uh, during the uh, inspection and testing part of the piping uh, it is subjected to hydro test so because of the hydro test also whatever stresses that are uh, produced that is the secondary stress then the psv when the psv will pop up there will be a recoil velocity and impact so that will also produce a considerable load on the piping system uh, the support should be sufficient enough to withstand this load so this is the and the water hammer when there is a sudden closure of any wall uh, there will be a shock and that is the water hammer so these are the examples of secondary stresses and stresses due to vibration in piping connected to rot rotating equipment these are the dynamic stresses okay so we cannot avoid that so whenever there is a pipe connected to a nozzle of a, a rotary equipment like a pump or a compressor or a turbine so that particular pipe will always be subjected to vibrations continuous vibrations with certain frequencies so whatever supporting we will provide to that kind of a pipe it should be a flexible support like a spring because it has to absorb it has to give certain rigidity to the pipe at the same time that support should be uh, eligible to absorb the vibrations that are produced by those uh, rotary pipe now stress considered for a pipe stress analysis stresses considered so this is the static loads 
So the weight of the pipe, hydro test, thermal expansion, and settlement. These all we have discussed. So here we can see how that actual because of the expansion, how that pipe movement is affected. This is the hydro test. Now this is the dynamic load. Okay. So dynamic load is the PSV pop up, slug flow. Whenever there is a two phase flow, this is the example of two phase flow. We can see here. The entire piping is under vibration. This is the water hammer. So the closure and opening of the wall leads to the water hammer or a shock, the uh, uh, hydraulic shock in the piping. So whatever stresses that will be developed, we have to design and position the supports in such a manner that they are capable to absorb all these stresses and keep the system within a safe limit. Then the wind we have discussed, seismic and vibrations. These are the applicable codes and standards that are being used. ASME B31.3 which is for power piping, ASME B31.3 for process piping, ASME B31.4 pipeline transportation systems for hydrocarbons and other liquids. That is from one place to another, we can see the pipe, uh, pipe lines are used for transfer of uh, hydrocarbons. So for that we have this ASMEB 31.4, then ASMEB 31.8 gas transmission and distribution pipe. So it is uh, because of the gas which are lighter, uh, chances of leakage and all is more. So that is why uh, we have to do little bit stringent uh, testing for leak for leakage to avoid the leakage of the gases. Now uh, the dimension standards uh, we, which we use for the pipe stress analysis, generally these are described in the design basis which is provided by the client. But if it is not given by the client, then these are the general uh, dimension standards which we can refer. Dimension standard for centrifugal pump API 610, dimension standard for centrifugal compressor APA 617 centrifugal compressor means non positive displacement compressor where we don't have much pressure. But of course, there will be uh, vibrations because of uh, very high speeds of the impeller. And the expansion bellows, we use HMA, Expansion Joint Manufacturers Association, which is a full form. Steam turbine is NEMA 23, dimension standard for fire heater API 560. Check wall API 594, reciprocating compressors API 618, air cooled exchanger, exchanger API 661, storage tanks API 650. So this is all about the today's first part, first episode on pipe stress analysis. So stay connected with us and Enjoy the further episodes which are going to be quite deeper than what we are uh, we have discussed today and will be much more interesting than this. So once again I insist you to subscribe our channel and also support us financially by, by supporting our work you can uh, our phone pay uh, number is being shared in the description below. Thank you once again for watching this video. Have a fantastic day ahead and happy